Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the Word. In uh, verse 26, in verse 26, this is segment two. This is segment two. It says, then after 62 weeks, which is really 69 because there's seven plus 62, after 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off, and he will have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. So he speaks about the destruction not only of the city of Jerusalem, but the temple as well. Now we learned this a couple of weeks ago when we studied about the abomination that causes desolation. Right here is what's known as a prophetic pause. So that much is going to be fulfilled, but then the third part says the end will come like a flood, and unto the end there will be war. Desolations have been decreed. So what happened after 69 weeks? 69 weeks. History tells us that Jerusalem, as well as the temple, was destroyed by Titus the emperor in 70 AD, or just after the 69 weeks, or 483 years. If you put our next slide up there, Caleb, just to kind of show you the math. So 7 plus 6, or I'm sorry, 7 plus 62 is 69. If you take 69 times 7, that's 480 three years. So it states that after 69 weeks from the time of the decree, for, right, from Artaxerxes, is, is issued to be rebuild Jerusalem, Messiah will appear and will be cut off. In other words, Messiah is going to be killed. How many of you know that's true? And the city and the temple will be destroyed. So this passage Listen, saints of God, it presents a major challenge for the Jews who are still waiting for Mashiach. Because this prophecy means that Messiah, listen to me, he had to appear, he had to come and be killed prior to, before the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. And we know that's already happened, amen? All right, so here's my question to you. If Messiah had to come before 70 A.D., according to the Old Testament scriptures, my question is, if not Jesus, who? Who else? If not Jesus, who? So let's go a little deeper into the, in detail these numbers. That was Algebra 1. We're going into advanced algebra two right here. So here we go. <laughs> Some of you think right now, I know I should have stayed in algebra class and shouldn't have been cutting class every week. I knew that that would come back to haunt me later. I should have paid attention instead of looking at little Bobby or little Susie over there. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here, here's the math. Remember, the scripture breaks up the 70 weeks into three segments. Verse 25, it says there'll be seven weeks and 62 weeks. Verse 27, he will confirm a covenant with one week. That's 7 plus 62 plus 1 equals 70. That's how we arrive at the term in eschatology today, Daniel's 70 weeks. Now, the second segment, or 62 more weeks for a total of 69 weeks, or 483 years, is to the coming of Messiah. The last week, the 70th week, will be the last seven weeks years on earth as we know. And that will be divided in two by the signing of the covenant for the abomination that causes desolation with Messiah returning at the end of the final seven years. So let's look at the significance of the second segment here. Watch this. This is part two. We're looking at Daniel 9, uh, chapter 9, verse 25. It says, know and understand this. From the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. This is a total of 69 weeks or 483 years for the completion of the first two segments or until 
Messiah arrives. Once again, our starting point is the issuing of the decree by King Artaxerxes in Nehemiah chapter 2. Now these following calculations that I'm about to show you were discovered by Sir Robert Anderson. So I didn't stay up all week long in the middle of the night doing all these calculations. Somebody with me? And it was published in his book called The Coming Prince, which was published in 1894. So listen, say, I said that to say this math has been vetted by scholars for more than 100 years. So this message, these calculations, isn't coming from some date-setting YouTuber last week who got some new revelation. How many know there's a lot of craziness out there on YouTube? Jesus is coming the second Tuesday of next week. Oh, you don't think that goes into the Christian world? I know some of you were alive during Y2K. How many still have some of that survival food in your house? They were selling that hard over Christian television. I was listening to a brother the other week. He, they bought a bunch of it about three years ago. They finally ate the chocolate pudding, I guess they had stayed, saved up. Said it was still good, so. The end of the world is coming. Y2K story. Jesus' tribulation's coming on this day and this time. Oh, buy a, dig yourself a shelter. Go get yourself a farm. <laughs> Chillax, y'all. So this isn't something new. This, these numbers have been well vetted. So let's walk through this now. So you have 69 weeks plus seven which is 483 years for the first two segments. King Artaxerxes signs the decree on Nisan 2, 444 BC. Well, how do we know this? Okay, here's why. History records that King Artaxerxes took his reign in 464 BC. Nehemiah 2 records he signed the decree on the month of Nisan in the 20th year of his reign. In other words, in 444 BC. Here's the important factor here. Pagan kings would only sign major edicts or decrees during a crescent moon. Y'all with me? In 444 BC, you could track this through Nassau because they have all this. In 440 C, 444 BC, the crescent moon, which would have been Nisan the second. Nisan the second. Next slide, Caleb, please. If you multiply 69 weeks by 483 years, which it's 360 because that's the days in the number of a Jewish calendar, not 365 like ours, you get a total of 173,880 days. However, if you move 173,880 days forward from Nisan the second, 444 BC, you land directly on the 10th of Nisan in 32 AD. All right, pastor, what's the significance? Because that is precisely on the day, on the Sunday, on which Jesus Christ came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey in Luke chapter 19. Watch this, Zechariah 9 and 9. Throw that up there, Caleb. Here's what it reads. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, look, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So exactly to the day, Jesus Christ, do you see the accuracy of the holy word of God? Now, now, now some Christians refer to this as Palm Sunday, which is okay. However, this is the day that the nation of Israel first recognized their king, Jesus, as Messiah. And they shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody in this house, give our God a great big praise. 
Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yerusha, and I hope you enjoyed today's short word. Now, you can help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the earth by simply hitting that like button, subscribing to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And last but not least, share this message with all your friends and family. Well, God bless you and Maranatha. Jesus Christ is coming soon. To proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ To every nation, every generation To all creation to proclaim the gospel